Hey guys and welcome back to another Tech Tutorial Tuesday and I'm going to be migrating my own personal home assistant installation from one platform to another in the next couple of weeks and I thought, you know, I've showed you how to use backups, we've done an entire dedicated video on backups before but I never actually showed you how to restore them if you want to migrate from one hardware platform to another or one installation type to another and also how to restore your backups in the case of an emergency. So if your home assistant were to suddenly die and all you've got is your backups, how would you actually restore them into a new platform uh, and be back up and running? So that is what we're going to be covering today. If you like this video, make sure to drop a like and get subscribed if you aren't already. And if you want your question answered in the next Tech Tutorial Tuesday, make sure to leave it in the comments down below and you never know, it might just answer it. Hopefully you're doing this of your own free will and you're doing a migration and not having to recover from a disaster or a failure, but make sure you have your proper backup strategy in place um, so that if you ever do need those backups, they are available in the case of a failure. There's nothing worse than having to rebuild from scratch. I've done an entire video on how to automate your backups. You can check that out up here. I would highly recommend getting that in place in case you ever do need them. For this video, I'm also going to assume you, that you have your new installation already up and running um, and sitting waiting at the dashboard or waiting at the, uh, the setup screen ready to go. With that said, let's jump into the first method, which is going to be the snapshots method. All right, so getting started with the snapshot method, the first thing you're gonna to want to do is to take a brand new snapshot. If you're recovering from a disaster, then you will need to use your existing backup. But for this demo, we are going to create a brand new snapshot. Head over into the supervisor and we actually need to do a little bit of an extra step depending on your setup here. If you are running MariaDB, which hopefully you are, if you aren't, then you can check out this video for how to do that. But if you are already up and running with MariaDB, then we are going to want to stop that add-on first. The reason being is that I've seen issues before where the database won't restore properly and is corrupted when trying to restore it. So stopping the add-on first will prevent that issue from happening. Head into the MariaDB add-on and hit the stop button and make sure to untick the watchdog option. Again, you don't need to do this if you're running the standard SQL Lite database. Once done, head over into the snapshots menu and enter a name for your snapshot. Then select full or partial for the type, depending on whether you want to copy over everything or not. I'm using full here, but I would encourage you to try and make your snapshots as small as possible, particularly if you have a lot of files in your media folder, such as recordings from Frigate. It might be better to use a partial snapshot and select everything except from the media folder. Folder. You can also choose to password protect the snapshot at this point if you want to. Then click the create button to start taking a snapshot. This process can take quite a long time depending on the type of hardware you're using as well as the size of your install. So sit tight for this to complete. You don't need to wait on this page if you don't want to and you can monitor the progress from the systems page. But make sure to not go and make any changes while this is happening. Once complete, your snapshot will show up on the snapshots page. And at this point, we need to download the backup onto your machine, ready to upload to your new installation. Now it's time to say goodbye to your original installation and power her off. Don't worry, she won't feel a thing. Then head over to the web page of your new installation. I'm gonna assume it's waiting at the setup screen and you'll notice at the bottom there is the option to restore snapshots. Feel free to give this a try if you want. I'm gonna demonstrate a different way because I've occasionally ran into issues, particularly with larger installs where this will sometimes time out when restoring. But I'm just letting you know that that option is there if you need it. So go ahead and just type in a basic login. Don't spend any time configuring anything here since it'll be overwritten anyways. Once at the dashboard, head over to Supervisor and into Snapshots. And before you upload the snapshot, I would advise you to configure your IP address first. If you had a specific IP address assigned to your previous Home Assistant installation, which you definitely should have, either through a static IP address configured on the Supervisor page or on your router's DHCP reservations, then I would encourage you to go ahead and assign that exact same IP address to your new installation. This will make things a lot easier and a lot more simpler going forward. 
um, both for you, but also maybe for any of previous integrations that you had on your home assistant installation, just in case any of them were dependent on that IP address. And these won't have been copied over from your, pre your previous install. It won't be copied over by the snapshots. So you'll need to go ahead and assign that manually once again. Make sure that your original installation is powered off when you do this so that there is no IP address conflict. And remember, when you do this, your URL will change. So the IP address of your URL will change back to what it was previously. So just be, so that's just something to be aware of. Once you've done that, we can now restore our backup. And on the snapshots page, you'll want to hit the three dots in the top right hand corner and then hit the upload and then select your backup file. Once it's uploaded, it will prompt you which things you want to restore and you can select certain items if you want. I'm just going to restore everything. After a few seconds, you will lose access to Home Assistant and the process will begin. Again, this process can take quite a bit of time, even an hour plus, depending on your hardware and install size. Don't be tempted to reboot, just trust the process and pray to the Home Assistant gods. Now, one thing to take note of here that trips a lot of people up is that they will sit on their Home Assistant dashboard and they'll, they'll wait for that little reconnecting message in the bottom, not knowing that their URL will have changed once again if you had HTTPS enabled on your previous install. If you didn't have HTTPS enabled, then this step, step won't apply. But if you did, you had HTTPS enabled, then make sure to change your URL to include HTTPS. A lot of people are sitting pressing refresh on the page and nothing's happening. It says not connecting. Um, and they think that the snapshot isn't working, but it's just because their URL has changed and they haven't thought to change it. So make sure to pay attention to that and change it if you need to. Once done, the first thing we need to do is log back in, and then we are going to want to start MariaDB. That's because the snapshot saved the MariaDB in the stopped state. Remember, we stopped it earlier, and it will be brought back up in the stop state also. And Home Assistant is going to be trying to write to the database while it's stopped. So start up the add-on, then give your entire server a reboot, just to make sure everything comes up fresh. And that is pretty much all there is to it. One final thing you're gonna to want to do is to head into configuration and then logs, and then check for anything outstanding or any weird anomalies you might have, and try to resolve anything that is out of the ordinary. These are gonna be very specific to your own install and your environment, but hopefully you don't have any. All right, so now that we've looked at the snapshots option, now let's take a look at the more manual method and this is gonna be useful if you're running Home Assistant Core or Home Assistant Docker. And for this to work, you're going to need um, SSH or terminal access to your installation, both the old and the new installation, or you can use the Samba, you need Samba share access onto your installation also. Either one will work. I'm gonna show you how to use SSH and terminal because it's a little bit more accessible for most people. And we're gonna move a little bit more quickly than we did um, earlier, because if you've decided to run Core or Docker, then chances are you are a little bit more experienced. But if you do need help, then make sure to join us on Discord, links in the description. Using SSH or Terminal, the first thing we are going to want to do is to stop Home Assistant from running. If you're using Docker, then this would be using the docker stop command. And if you are using Core, then this is probably by stopping the Home Assistant service. And the reason for doing this is to make sure that the database isn't being written to whilst taking the backup, so it doesn't get corrupted. Once you've done that, we then need to take a copy of our config folder. Use the cp command to copy the config folder to your home directory like this. Once done, use the tar command on the config folder you just copied to your home directory to zip it up into a single file to make it easier to export to our new install. Once completed, you will want to use something like WinSCP to download the tar file to your laptop. And then again, we use WinSCP to upload the tar file to your new system. Once the file is transferred, you'll then want to jump back into your SSH or terminal, and we can then unpack the tar file using the following command. You'll also need to make sure that Home Assistant is stopped and not running on the new install. 
At this point, you're gonna to want to make sure to change the IP address of your new installation to be the exact same as the IP address on your old installation. And this is gonna make things a lot easier and nicer for you going forward, but also in case you have any integrations that depend on the IP address of your server. So make sure to go in and either set a static IP address on the machine itself or do a DHCP reservation on your router. Again, make sure that the original server is switched off so that there is no IP address conflicts. Finally, you will want to copy the extracted config folder to the new Home Assistant config location. Again, this will depend on which installation type you have chosen. If you're using this process to migrate from Home Assistant OS or supervised to Docker or container, then you're gonna to need to make sure to go into your config at this point and remove any of the features or functionality that was related to or specifically only available on Home Assistant OS, such as things like the MariaDB add-on, and or InfluxDB or Grafana, things like that. And you're also gonna to need to make sure to either copy your HTTPS certificates from your old install or disable HTTPS on the new one just until you get things up and running. And then start up the Home Assistant service or start the container and you are done. And that is pretty much it. That's pretty much all the things you need to do. The only thing I would say is to try and retain your original installation for perhaps a week or something, just to make sure you're happy, everything's up and running, and you don't need to get anything back from your old install. But like I mentioned, this is something I'm gonna be doing in the next couple of weeks myself. I'll be following through my own procedure. Uh, I'm migrating my original installation, the one I've had since I first started using Home Assistant, and I'm migrating that over to a new install in the coming weeks so wish me luck but let me know in the comments if you are migrating your own ones or if you um, have had to do this procedure in the past do let me know as always if you want to support the channel you can do so by becoming a patreon on patreon and your support allows me to keep on making these videos thank you to all my current patreon supporters your support is very much appreciated as always make sure to drop this video a thumbs up and get subscribed and i will see you in the next one.